Welcome to Great Food and the Best Topics with Husband and Wife. We're at the beautiful bank in downtown Minneapolis. It's part of the West Inn. The ambiance levels out of this world. Uh, but we're gonna find out about the food pretty soon here. Uh, you see anything that just pops out of the page, Trish? Yeah, I'm probably gonna get a cup of the chicken wild rice soup and then I'm gonna get the butter nut squash ravioli. That does sound really good. That sounds like a dinner more than a lunch though. Well, I don't feel like eating like a sandwich. Yeah, or anything. me either. There's not really like Everything's like fancy, yeah. but it's there's not a lot of options. Yeah, I'm gonna do the fried chicken, I think. See what their fried chicken is like. Enjoy it. House pickle, roasted sweet potato, biscuit. I know. Or be very disappointed. One of the two. <laughs> I think I'm gonna love it though. I think it'll be good. Yeah, it sounds good. Like, it, it, can't, it can't look this fancy and not have like quality good, food. Like decent food, yeah. One thing that I am disappointed about is this soda. You know when the like syrup to sparkling water ratio is off? I don't know, I haven't been drinking soda <laughs> in like eight to nine years. Isn't that and when crazy? I was drinking soda, I All wasn't right. like... So guys. Had any fancy soda. Eight. We're good. Are you good. You ready to order? Yeah, we are. Yeah, I'm Would ready. You like Fried chicken for me. Fried chicken for you. For you. Can I get a cup of the chicken wild rice soup? Okay. And then can I also get the butternut squash ravioli, please? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Um, yeah, about eight to nine years ago, Trisha made the decision to never drink soda again for health purposes. It wasn't really for health purposes. Oh, was it for Lent? It was for, yeah, it was for religious reasons. Uh, okay. So the story, you were there. I was don't there. Remember. I don't, I so don't. the story was that Mickey, your cousin, okay. was like, did you know whenever, it was during Lent, he's like, did you know whenever you give up something for Lent, like you're supposed to give it up forever? And <laughs> what? then I did you, not know that. <laughs> and you were like, um, I yeah, know. I don't know where he, his source is from, <laughs> like, he, he just said it. it up. And, um. I think you were like, no way, like I couldn't give out something that I, you know, that I really enjoyed forever. And I'm like, I could. And uh, you're like, well, what could you give up? And I said, soda, like I can give up soda. Like there's so many other things to drink. Like I don't need to drink soda. Like if Jesus gave up his life for us, like I can give up soda. Yep, I remember that. So that's why I don't drink soda anymore. Like sometimes it gets hard. <laughs> Especially when I have like, when we order like Domino's pizza, it's like this is the best time to like have soda. I know. So you miss it a little bit? Um, sometimes. Uh, but yeah, it's always funny whenever someone's like, you, so you want to drink soda? Like your parents always forget that I don't drink soda anymore. Like I gotta tell them, like I, tell, I probably told them the story like at least three times, like why I don't drink soda anymore. <laughs> And you hate reminding people too, so that stinks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't feel. I said I don't, no soda. I don't. No, I don't feel annoyed when after I have to remind your parents. Yeah. But, yep. Interesting. <laughs> Crazy. Nuts. I couldn't just go cold turkey like that. She just made the decision and never did it again. It was pretty impressive. That's my know, wife I for you. I just feel like. If I drink soda, I was like, what if my life is just cursed? <laughs> it's like, is it worth I it? I made a promise to God. Is I can't it worth go it? Back. I understand that. So, um, we've been trying to get this episode out for the last two weeks. We've been to two other restaurants. And although it's kind of sounding loud in this restaurant, to be honest with you right now, the other two restaurants were extremely loud. By the time we listened to the audio, it was just like noise. So... We apologize, uh, but you know, that's the thing. You know, you you gotta live with us. Gotta just wait for that next episode and get excited and share and uh, with share that episode with your friends and family members. And then of course, like uh, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. So today's topics 
Um, we're going to revisit the two that we tried to talk about uh, and then talk about some current event stuff. I'll kick it off with uh, some awesome news that Barack Obama just signed a multi-year uh, Netflix deal. Thoughts? <laughs> what do you mean? Like he's going to have like a show? Kind of. These are going to be doing, putting out specials on oh, okay. the thing that Obama and Michelle Obama, uh, Barack and Michelle are really excited about or care about. Okay, so it's just basically like what, like some like organizations that they're working with or like what, what are they doing? Well, it's potentially, and this is via Netflix, uh, scripted series, unscripted series, docu-series, documentaries, and features. So, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty sounds, nuts. Sounds all over the place. It sounds um, like it's, <laughs> It could be anything. <laughs> for sure it'd be good. Like, I think, I think it's a good thing because, you know, it was the first black president, you know, that was definitely a moment in history and um, I don't know it's just something to continue his legacy on and just I think people when he uh, you know left office that uh, people were just still wanting to see more of him and Michelle um, so I think this is that way to like feel that feel that need for, for sure. people I'm sure it's going to be something positive and inspiring and, oh. And that's what we I'll need. I'll watch it. Yeah, I, I will check it out. Honestly, um, did you, have you watched the David Letterman series that came out on Netflix? No. Their first episode was Obama. I couldn't wait to watch that. So, and it was really good. Uh, that's kudos to David. Obviously, Obama is an awesome, like, interviewee. In anything that I've ever seen him on, he's just been funny and charming. Yeah. But it'd so be nice to. Very charismatic. Yeah. He has a nice voice. Yeah, that's funny to say, but very true. I totally understand what you mean by that. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited because it's, as you said, a void. You know, with this current president, you know, maybe he's trying to get his agenda done right and through the door, but he's doing it tactless. And we talked about this on the on the last episode. It's just like. The biggest part about Obama, I don't care what color you are, he shows you how to be a gentleman and he shows yeah. you how to be polite and kind and uh, deeper than most, right? I think our current president is super shallow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's a nice word. Yeah, neither here nor there um, in regards to our current president, but uh, our, our past president, he was a beacon for that. and. I think that Netflix with over a hundred million subscribers, I don't know, is it 160 million? It was in this article, something like that. That's crazy. You have direct access to 160 people, you know? And in this day and age, it's one thing. 160 million people? Yeah. Well, you said 160. Oh, million, yeah, I gotta add the <laughs> M. Uh, in this day and age where everybody has a private screen, you know, AKA your cell phone, mm -hmm. it's one thing to go on a talk show. I don't even know what the last time I watched a late night talk show. Or so watched John Oliver all the time. We used to. When was the last time you watched the show? I don't know. It's been a while. Right. It's been a while. I don't know. I think when it once television used to be like that go to. You'd go to like the late night talk show. You'd go to like the news and try to use their platform to basically get your point across to the masses. But now it's like. Netflix is the right direction to go to. If, I mean, when was the last time you watched Netflix? Just last night. <laughs> you know, this morning. This morning. <laughs> like, <laughs> it is your TV. No, it is. No, for sure. I think yeah. it's. I think it's um good. Netflix has definitely evolved over the years into something um, about getting like your message out. Like I said, like with the. That what the hell documentary was on Netflix oh, and everyone's yeah. like, I'm going vegan. <laughs> and you know, they have good documentaries on there, but they also have um, I mean I think maybe any any like documentary has an agenda. 
so yeah anybody has an agenda true, everyone true. and like especially in law you just the art of debate like it's so, it's so funny to um it's always two positions right like say that comment because i was watching dear white people like the second season and that was like one of the one of the uh, debates that were in class about you know is there ever is there such a thing as an unbiased documentary <laughs> right and um so there was that debate okay and, and i recommend that too if anybody um like watches netflix that dear white people is is really good it's a really thought provoking i just want to say this one line this is totally like getting off of topic <laughs> it's okay uh, we're just talking about Netflix now. But, um, <laughs> we, we were always talking about Netflix. There's this one line, and then they are white people. And, you know, basically, like, the, the um, I guess the tone in the second season was that, um, you know, there's, well, it's, it's called Dear White People. So that, you know, it's about this person, this, this biracial woman who attends Ivy League college and is just basically... Is it an Ivy League or historically black? It's an Ivy League. Oh, okay. Um, and she, you know, is just letting, you know, white people know, like, the oppression that black people go through, whether it be systematic or, you know, just outright. And so now, in the second season, it's about that, um, I don't know, like a, the opposite. Instead, instead now it's it's about it's it's a uh, about white people saying like now we're being oppressed now we're being discriminated <laughs> against and then there there was a scene where there was discussion between um some people that were like you know white people appropriated this land from the native americans then they they appropriate slaves to like um, work the land that they appropriated from Native Americans, of course they would be appropriating oppression. <laughs> so, I thought that was a funny line. Yeah, that's funny. So, any last thoughts on Obama and Michelle I'm embracing excited. Netflix? I think it was smart. Smart, yeah, me too. I can't wait. It is weird that it's like pie in the sky. It could be a cartoon. It could be a documentary. Like, I know it was many I, I'm kind of surprised they don't have. Yeah. Like, just, <laughs> like kinda, who pitched that? Yeah. Like, let's, so, like, let's pitch. You know, let's pitch. <laughs> it was just like it could be whatever. Obama. Period. Deal. Yeah. Right, let's, do <laughs> let's do it. You don't know what it's gonna be. We like. don't know what it's gonna be like, but we but should let's do, it. do it. I would take that. I would take that bet too. Honestly, like one of the best. I don't know if it was the time. But one of the best like campaigns I've ever seen in my life, the Obama campaign for uh, t was it 2000? And <laughs> 2008. Eight? Oh, you were waiting. Was it? Uh, yeah. I think so. I think it's 2008. But it was so like it's crazy. Just like the whole thing, like the logo from the rollout. Just the campaign was like impeccable. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can't. It was the only campaign that I paid attention to. Paid attention to. to, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's um. But but does that say a lot about the campaign? Or was it our age? It was our age. Yeah. Like we were, what twenty? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to any other presidents, <laughs> like in high school. <laughs> I wasn't even sure who the president was at the time. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what uh, what topic do you have for us today? So, I, my topic was just to you know we're we're starting this podcast and it's about having meaningful discussions or just you know just interesting discussions. And I think it's also about like letting our audience get to know who we are too. Uh -huh. And. Um, I always think it's interesting whenever I when I think about it um, how diverse like our kids are and are the different cultures that that they come from and are we come from you know you're Nigerian and Trinidadian and I'm Native American and Vietnamese and I thought it would be it would be um, cool to just talk about our backgrounds and 
maybe just tell like a highlighting story about each background. Okay, why don't you All kick right. it off? Or whatever. Um, yeah, so Native American Vietnamese, my dad is Vietnamese, and um, you know, he came here from Vietnam. I don't really have like a lot to say about my Vietnamese background just because, you know, I wasn't around, my dad wasn't around when I was young. Um, he just kind of periodically popped up. Um, and he has like a million other kids. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that I don't know if it's a Vietnamese thing or if it's just a him thing. But despite not being in my life, you know, I probably have seen him six times in my whole life. That's crazy. And despite that, despite, you know, me having a stepdad since I was six, you know, being that father figure, he, oh, he still feels like he has some type of power over me. Like some type of like authority over me. Right, and I don't know. I, I, think, I think that's crazy. Like that he just feels like he, you know, he would just call and be like, hey, why don't you come down here and visit? You know, okay. You know, and he worked for, he worked for Delta at the time. So it was like an easy situation for him to like book people's flights and us to like fly to go see him because he lives in Tennessee. Um, but yeah, it was just so weird. Or just like any anything that was going on in my life when we, you know, when I when he found out that I was pregnant with Nikita, it was just like, oh my gosh, you're ruining your whole life, and like this is what your life is supposed to be like. It, it was just so weird to me that he just still felt like he had like a place to say anything. And then maybe it was even more weird on my side that I felt like I don't know, like I had to tried to please him too still we actually did have a place um yeah so like one of the i don't know one of the i guess a funny story um is that despite him and maybe this is a, a topic for another conversation but just like the nature versus nurture type of thing because even though like he hasn't been in my life very often i feel like we're very similar people <laughs> like he's a hothead i feel like i am too and um you know one of the times when i went to go see him we got into like a big fight and he said <laughs> he said that he would, like, would, would kill me or something like if there's nobody around like i would kill you like what? he said so crazy to me like that that's crazy and you never told me that i did tell you that because i called you that night when it happened oh my gosh and i remember the i remember saying like you know what i understand why he would get so angry and say <laughs> i've threatened death on my own children i understand <laughs> i never know no i haven't but I've definitely threatened death on you. Um, That's true. And I'm still here. But I'm just saying, like, to just to be so enraged or to just be at that level. Yeah. Like, I could understand it. And I, you know, did my... Did you get him to that level? Huh? From your, like, in your opinion, did you get him to that level? I, I mean, I get why he was probably so... He was embarrassed. We were at his retirement, like, party. Oh. And then he got, again, like with another one of my siblings that he hadn't been around for he felt like he has this authority over people and like you know my brother didn't feel that way like who who are you to tell me you know when i should how long i should stay or if i can go now and so they started getting into it and then like i interjected and i was just like why are you always so mean to people like you're so mean like this is why nobody wants to come see you because you're so mean and then I remember as soon as I said it, like I, I was like, all of I was like, you're, I was like, you're such <laughs> a, I was like, you're such a a hole. And then as soon as I said that, all the music just like cut out, and everybody <laughs> in the room like heard me say that to him. So you know, it was embarrassing. Yeah. So I get it. But before that, it was uh, it was super funny 
because so he said that you know about like killing me or whatever and before that he was talking about how he wanted all of us to go to Vietnam and visit in Vietnam mm -hmm. and he was like I don't know how we got to it but he started saying something about like yeah you don't even care what you do in Vietnam like you could kill somebody and like they not even care and then he made that comment and then it just made me think like I'm never going to Vietnam with this guy <laughs> like, <laughs> like ever but that's my story with him moving on my view mini side oh no but he's one more comment but he's definitely like the stereo stereotypical Vietnamese person like he has his own nail shop right now that makes sense his, his wife works in that nail shop that makes sense. His, my sister works in that nail shop yes uh he asked me if i could go work in that nail shop <laughs> and i was like i'm a lawyer like i'm not gonna go work in a nail shop we talked about part time you know <laughs> just thinking, you know um you have anything more anything uh, extra to do you know just come on through paint some nails Anytime that I went to go see him, he took me to a, a pho restaurant and we ate pho. So he has a, he has a Vietnamese accent. So he's definitely he's Vietnamese. Yes. No question about it. <laughs> so Vietnamese last name. <laughs> and then the other half is Native American. So my other half is Native American. Um, I mean, that's something that, like, I wouldn't say that I've, I've you know, because there's definitely, like, really traditional people that super into their culture, that go to sweats, that go to ceremonies, that um, really speak their language. And I, I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm super traditional, but, you know, I did grow up on a reservation all my life. I did attend a tribal school all my life. Um, I know my language somewhat. You know, I know some basics. I know my colors, my animals, my body parts. Uh, I know a sentence um, but the funny thing as, as I got older like there were a lot of thank you thank you as I got older like a lot of words that were being said when I was younger like I didn't even realize that they were in Dakota like I just thought like that was the word that you said in English like one of the words is like kushi which means like grandma in Dakota like I didn't know like I thought that was that was just the yeah, word that you it. used to say grandma That's or like cool. there's this there's this this blueberry dessert and it's called wojipi and um I just thought that's what it's called, but you know, like it's like blueberry in like Dakota, or like it's a Dakota word. Like there's just like so many words that I didn't, I didn't realize were like Dakota, or like there's a lot of like things that people do. Yes, Everything's okay. Oh, can I get um, ginger ale? Ginger ale. I'll switch to ginger ale. For you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, there's like just like a lot of things. I don't know, I think maybe like this is all this talk about like don't do this stuff because you bring the spirits or you know, this brings bad spirits and stuff like that. I just, just thought that was just things that people like did but come to find out it was just it was because it was my culture. <laughs> like so weird. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Um but yeah, I think one of the biggest the biggest highlights, you know, in my culture was when all of us me, my mom, and all of my siblings, and our kids, like when I got our Indian name, and it was like a really, it was a really big deal to do that. So that was that was great that we all did that as a family. I'm taking pictures of my food. Yeah. So you guys can see what it looks like. Uh, first impressions on the food? Um, sure, right. I need some pepper. Can you hand me that shaker? My food looks like a. Hey, listen. Thanks. Okay. My food looks like a white person fried it. Like, it looks really, like, not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't look good. Just, it looks visually unappealing, like, for real. Unless it's, like, 
special. Like I'm gonna eat this, and it's like, oh my gosh, the flavors is like making my the chemicals inside my brain just go crazy right now. It's like a different tasting too, just because like the Thai that I work for, like it's known for wild rice soup. Ah. Uh, so it definitely tastes a little different. Yeah, everything looks really different, but not good. Usually, like things look super good and are okay when you go to these nice restaurants. I'm really surprised that the food actually looks terrible. I'm hoping that it tastes great, but <laughs> it if it looks bad. and tastes terrible, that's that's a huge red flag. Um, those, those are really cool stories that you shared about your family. How about you, babe? All right, me. I am Nigerian and Trinidadian. Um, I'm first generation American. Um, my parents came here to pursue, my dad came here on his own to pursue education and then my, my mom came here with, with uh, my grandma uh, when she was 13. So she you know, went through the high school and you know, eventually uh, graduated and went to college in upstate New York, in Ithaca, New York to be exact. And then that's where she met my mom, I mean my dad, and had me. And uh, yeah, so uh, I've had the opportunity to visit the countries that they're from uh, at a young age. I think I was in my teen age years, I want to say, for both of, the, both of the trips. And I went to Nigeria, uh, all the way to the village, and it's exactly what you guys are imagining. I'm talking about like huts no not not that bad uh brick houses so like all the houses were pretty much made out of bricks there was no like wind like i don't know if there was windows it was so long ago but it was definitely like no insulation which makes sense right so you can kind of see through the walls in some points and things of that nature there's no plumbing inside the house so you'd actually go outside to use the bathroom in a hut and there's like a pit right so uh, hopefully all this stuff makes sense. I know there's like outhouses in America, so you might have seen one in a rural situation, but um, this is how they use the bathroom. In the back of the house, they go outside, use the bathroom. Okay, and then they get- shouldn't like be so detailed and about like, oh. talking about going into the bathroom in a certain way we're eating. <laughs> like it, it's so detailed right it's now. It's a pit. Like I'm not telling you what's going on in there, but I'm like, I want you to know that this is a pit. Like it is third, maybe even fourth world it's crazy uh and totally surreal and allows you it, it, that oh i should also mention to get water you have to walk about a half mile to get water just to get water a half mile put in a bucket then you walk a half mile back and this water is like hot because it's straight from the earth i mean it's not hot but it's not like ice cold it's funny because it's like if i have a bottle of water in my house and it's not ice cold i'm annoyed you know and that's not even an option for them so yeah, it just allows me to really appreciate, you know, what I have access to as a first worlder in America. So it's pretty cool. Um, I think that it, one of my crazy stories, kind of from that, although that's all crazy, is they they were really pumped to see my dad come back to the village. It was like a whole bunch of kids with no shoes on running after this car. It's exactly what you would see in like in a documentary or like <laughs> something on Netflix or something. And then um, somebody stole my Game Boy. I had a green uh, Game Boy Color. I'm very angry about that to this day. I'll never go back because of that reason. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going back there, man. They're thieves. Nah, but I, I'm pretty reckless with my stuff, so I'm sure I just left it out. I'm sure you did. Yeah, I'm sure I did. Uh, the funniest part about that trip, though, was we slept in my dad's room. And my dad's bedroom, I don't know why, but well, I should say he had a TV in there and a bed in there and a desk. But the bed had like a hole in the middle of it. Like you just sunk right into the middle of this bed. Like, it was like and my dad was like, yeah, this is how my bed is. Like, don't you notice that there's something wrong with your bed? There's a hole in it. You know, like it sinks in the middle. He's like, yeah, you know, you just deal with it. And then I'm like, you know, and what's this rainbow thing on your TV? He's like, oh, that's the color upgrade. I'm like color upgrade? So it's a black and white, legit black and white TV. And then they have this like see-through film that's like in rainbow color. So the black and white shows, you know, shows through in rainbow. It's not color. It's just a film on top of this black and white TV. It was so funny to me. 
but it was a true to life upgrade to, to him that he went to the store, saved up his money for and purchased. Like, <laughs> anyway. So yeah, man, unless you, unless you count your blessings here in America for sure that you can just order something and in 10 minutes, some white looking fried chicken comes out. Um, that's awesome. So like, I also vis vis visited Trinidad. That's an awesome place. I'll go back there um, any day. And um, just like, it's like a, it's the Caribbean. It's right off the coast of Venezuela. It's beautiful, palm trees all over the place, great temperature, you know, a lot of moisture in the air so you're not getting dried out you know, like, as if you were in like Arizona or something like that. It's really nice, beautiful, beautiful people, amazing and delicious food. Oh, Nigeria. Everybody eats, with, like they eat with their hands. They, ser <laughs> they served a huge plate of rice on this platter the size of this table that we're eating at and there was like maybe 20 people around the table and everybody platter. just put their hand into the rice it was like super unsanitary to me anyway first world type stuff and the food wasn't that great we ate goat meat it wasn't great trinidadian food some of the best food on the planet like amazing by the way i just took a bite of this chicken and it is bomb um so at least they got that going for them um fast forward around the end of the trip we had a resort uh that we booked out in tobago so mind you there's two islands in trinidad and tobago trinidad is the main island tobago is the uh smaller island more for vacationing so our resort is on the other side of the island you fly to this island it's flat ish on this side of the island then it's mountainous just mountainous until you like, it's just a mountain so my dad's like yeah we'll just drive to the other side so they rent a car we start driving now these are one of these like third world country type roads where there's only one lane but there's two you know there's two lanes but there's only enough room for one car there's people on the side of the road hanging on the side of the road like trying to sell you mangoes and apples and all sorts of exotic fruits um little huts on the side of the hill like people live here like how like you know it's just crazy looking and my dad is just super comfortable you know on the in america you drive on the right side of the road here you drive on the left side of the road so he's on the left side uh, of the road so it's just totally different um or left side of the car i don't know just the cars are backwards too and he's driving and he's just all confident eating his little apple <sighs> Mind you, there's no guardrails on these roads. We're on a mountain. It's a cliff to death. You look over, it's like, Dad, if you like move over two more inches, you're, we're gonna plummet to our death. And he's just like nonchalantly eating this apple, driving along. Like, like this is not the most intense situation that he's ever been in in his life. Uh, needless to say, we get to the other side. It's just as gorgeous as expected, totally worth the trip. And uh, we end up, you know, coming home. Come to find out there's like another way that goes through the mountain, like cuts through the mountain that's way safer. Two lanes. I'm like, Dad, why didn't we take this like path in the first place? He's like, yeah, well, I wanted to take the scenic route. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> this was an option. <laughs> So yeah, man, this is like a little story of where my family are, is from. I don't know anything about, really, and I feel bad about it, because I don't know anything about their history or the language. I don't really know the language very well. And I feel like it's one thing that I miss, you know. I, I, I missed out on, because now I can't really even share that type of stuff with my kids, you know. I've, and really notice Trish like saying the numbers, uh, her native numbers with the kids, all of them pretty much. And they, I mean, the kid would be able to tell you what one and two and three is, I think. But to ask her anything about her Nigerian or Trinidadian side, and I don't think, she, I think she'd be lost for words. So, one thing that I do miss. Yeah. Yeah. I'm afraid, right? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Your dad's funny. Yeah. No one can ever understand what my dad is saying either. <laughs> it's like, what did he say? Like, 
said, how are you doing? <laughs> some regular stuff. I can hear him like playing his day. No one I mean, understands. I can't understand him like in person, but it's really hard for me to understand him on a phone. <laughs> Like especially like and it's I was so funny is I don't know if it's just like Nigerians in general, but they always sound like so intense. Like yeah. it'd be like, How are you? It's just like, you know, super friendly, but it just sounds so intense. <laughs> what is that? I think it's a fried um lemon. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, very ugly meal. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, my, my meal Ready for the next too. topic? Yeah, so you going? Yeah, I have one. But before we get into that, what is that tasting like? <laughs> I mean, it's all right, but I wouldn't like order it again. She would never order it. She would never come to this restaurant ever again. It's nice to look at, but it's hotel food. Yeah, I thought it would have been. Better, right? Yeah. I'm very surprised. Very disappointing, maybe, guys. Maybe it's too fancy for my taste buds. I don't know. I don't think it tastes good. <laughs> maybe my chicken's okay. not that great. Yeah, great. All right, Cardi B just released the video to be careful. By the way, missed opportunity. She should have named the uh, like the track like B, like the letter B, like Cardi B. Oh, careful. right, 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 right. Right. Mm -hmm. Instead of B E. Anyway, did you see it? I've never seen it. All right, so I'll tell you about it. I'm a, I'm terrible at telling people about things because I'm usually like half on. Yeah. But she's getting married, mm -hmm. and it's kind of it's dope. Like the concept's super dope to me. Obviously, that song is one of my favorites. I, it's, I think it's, it's a really good song. It's one of your favorites. It's a really good song. Like, like I think about you and me. Obviously, that's a little bit weird because I have to take what? myself out of it. Because I'm like, be careful because I'm. Yeah, that, that motherfucker better be careful with your heart. But I'm talking about me, you know, so it's weird. I also think about Mikkel and what happened with her ex-boyfriend. That hurts me a little bit. It's disappointing. He seemed like such a good guy. Came, he never came here, but I went over there when I went to New York and he loves the Timberwolves. We're in Minnesota, that's our team. Just seemed really nice. And I know Mikkel's, uh, what, 30, he's, she's my age, she's 31. And like, even mean like talking to my wife sometimes, it's like, it's almost like there's these like, I want to call them fictitious, but my wife would say they're real, um, like milestones. Like, so. There's a point in time where it's not okay to live with your parents anymore. There's a point in time where you're expected to have- <laughs> What? That's fictitious to you? I don't know. We can get into that in a different conversation. <clears throat> but, there's a, but you would agree there's a point in time that you should be married, right? That there's a point in time where you should have kids. Because you have a biological clock. I mean, I mean there's, there's ideal, a, yeah. there's ideal like yeah. timelines for people, for sure. Yeah, so she's on like on a path to meet her milestone, and all of a sudden, this loser like kills her heart. So it's tough. Anyway, this story resonates, I would imagine, with at least seventy percent of America. That's I, mean, I think, and there's like moments inside of her verse where it's like, that's real, you know, that's real stuff. And even in the chorus. Anyway, like the song. I, I can appreciate it as a man. <clears throat> the video off the chain so she looks beautiful Cardi B is a, a attractive person in general but they like make her hair to be totally different you've never seen her hair like this before she's in a wedding dress they're in like this uh, uh, chapel right like uh, in the middle of nowhere type of thing we've seen this scene before you know they're in the desert but there's a random chapel a whole bunch of references to Jesus Christ Mary uh, crosses all over the place right really dramatic uh, really old priest and she's walking through wedding gown all white right and she's walking down uh, it's kind of cool because I don't know these people but I assume that these are her people people like you know her entourage and they walk in before her and they sit down, but it's like nice little cameo. So if you ever wanted to give a cameo to your moms or that girl in the hood that you always, you know, like came up with, it was a great opportunity for that. Now keep in mind, all these people could be super random and just like, you know, off of Craigslist or something like that, but good opportunity and they look awesome. Then she comes in and like, there's like a ray of sunlight coming behind her. She's just walking through and it just looks dope. And she's jamming, obviously saying her, the, the lyrics to her, her verses. 
and she's getting married. Verse two comes out. Now that nigga dead, he's in a casket and she's all blacked out. And you know, so she's saying that verse. So that verse is a little bit more hardcore, you know? So I was like, the juxtaposition with the imagery, with the juxtaposition to the verse that I didn't, the verses that I didn't even really notice until I saw the imagery is pretty dope. So like, Cardi B does it once again, cause she did this, I think she did this really well with her initial video that she came out with. Bodak Yellow? Yeah, nah, is it Bodak Yellow? Tell me. With the, the lion she had, she has like a tiger or a lion. Bodak That's Yellow. Bodak Yellow. I think that video is crushed. Like, she killed that video, and once again, she killed it again. I don't know, I didn't think You didn't like Bodak Yellow? I didn't say I didn't like it, but it wasn't like, oh man. All right, right, it's not, situation. it's not, oh man. It's crushed, <laughs> like I didn't even hear, I've never heard that like word before. All right, it's not, oh man. <laughs> but considering the just, facts, it's oh man. I was just like, yeah, this, this is a good video. But for her very first video, she's flying all the way to Dubai. This is her first video before she even got like, popping. I don't know where it was. It was Dubai, in the desert, with What's a camel. Up? Oh, yeah, I guess. So. I don't know. It's just like, usually with somebody like that, what I was expecting was her on the block with her people. But that's not really like her first video. She's had other videos. It's her first that, like hit that, video. That's like that, where well, she's on the block the with her people. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I don't know what to say to defend you, Cardi, but this video right now is dope. I'll let my wife catch out. Um, big fan. Um, I guess. I love how we went. To like Obama, to Cardi B, like we're eclectic eight, like that. Topics. Yo, like Cardi B's dope. What do you think? You know, our album drops. We talked about this in the first episode. We feel like she's doing dope things. Do you think that momentum was destroyed by the advent? I think, man, like it was crazy because uh, Cardi dropped her music. Right, she had that one song. This song, like right here, be careful with. A small sample from uh, what's her name again? I'm sorry. What? Um, Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill, right? But then I think that Friday Drake dropped. Uh, I like it. Was it? Is it? I like it like that? No, that's a Cardi B track. What's the? Um, I don't know. It's like a woman. Nice for what? Yeah, nice for what? A woman empowerment song for sure. Um, with the same exact sample. Right, right. I, I noticed that too. I was like, that's kind of weird. And guess who dropped right after her or like started dropping singles? Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. Right. So all this distraction from the Cardi B push from the Young Money camp, did it take away from... I don't think so. No? No. I think it was just it was all music now. I'm listening to everything. Right, right. It just. But there, I mean, there's definitely like a team Cardi B and team Nicki Minaj, though. Like you always see it, like oh, you know, like there's like a comparison to one another. But I think that if you just like music, you know, you're just like able to appreciate music and good music. You don't need to do that. But there's like people who are hardcore on one team or another. But we on both. Yeah. And I agree with you. Whoever, uh, I believe she's managed by QC, Quality Control. Um, same people who manage Migos and the rest of those guys over there in Atlanta. And I don't know what type of like magic wand they got over there, but I'm thinking like, man, I don't think like Young Money's killed her or whatever like that, but yeah, Young Money's definitely distracting from the whole like move. like. But I still mess with this video that just dropped on the 21st today. But guess what? Even a couple days ago, the drop of De Niro was nuts. Nuts. Have you heard this song? Oh, babe. I we, don't know. I probably heard it, but I've. It I has J Lo. Uh, <coughs> oh, no. I, DJ Khaled. Oh, this is the lineup J Lo. And it's crazy because usually DJ Khaled is the first person <laughs> as like yeah, an artist. Yeah. So instead, they put J Lo featuring DJ Khaled, and, or I think it says J Lo featuring Cardi B and DJ Khaled. And this song, it's called The Narrow, The Narrow. So just imagine, it's crazy dope. As a follow up feature that's not even on her album, I just feel like Cardi's not going anywhere. No, I think whatever she's doing is working. Like, and that's usually, I think that's the, the best formula. Like, you come out. 
you have like a really big hit and then you just you just get you feature on like so many other people's songs yeah like you feature for so like so much while you're working on your album and then you like drop your album and i don't like i said i feel like like a lot like i didn't listen to all of the songs in her album but all of them are are quality songs mm-hmm. like but i don't know <laughs> like she's doing well sweet all right so when we get into the car i gotta show you this video i gotta show you this song but uh last but not least what's the last i know i know the song i just i haven't seen the video no no the De Niro song oh De Niro song yeah okay. you haven't heard that yet but you're gonna love it watch <laughs> And that brings us to our last topic. Yo, they gave me a whole like chicken breast. Like I've never seen that. <laughs> a fried chicken, like, yeah. like I'm in KFC or something like that. Disappointed. All right, I'm what's our last, uh, what's our last topic for the day? Um, last topic is, going, again, going back to like a, a personal, just to let, just to let our audience just get a better understanding of who we are and get to know us um and maybe just like something that people who are listening can just think about and reflect themselves um so i know when you when you're younger you think about what it is that you want to be you have these plans and then you know you grow up sometimes those plans are the same and sometimes they're not so my question is that you know what did how old were you how old were you when you decided, you know, like, I wanted to be this, like, you had made a plan in your head that you wanted to be whatever, and um, if it's the same uh, with the career choice that you chose now, or if it's different, and how is it, how is, how is it the same, if it, if it is at all? So, for me, um, what I, I did not know what I wanted to be up until college. But as a kid, I guess I wanted to be an inventor, an engineer of some sort. Yeah, we're good. And that, I think that was based on, like, my parents' desire to have me do, and I think a lot of immigrant parents say this, you got to be a lawyer, a doctor, or an engineer. So I picked engineer because I like to be creative. And then because I have an affinity for money. You like it? No, I did not like it at all. Oh, no? No. What is this? Is there anything you were looking for? Yeah, I guess it's just a different type of... Uh, okay, fried chicken. Fried chicken. This okay. is a lot different than I expected. Okay. But it's okay. Not a problem. Sorry about that. Not a problem at all. Um, yeah, so when I got to <clears throat> college, I was like, you know what? I want to make this money, though. Although engineers make a lot of money. So I decided, like, I'm gonna go for pre-med. And by my second semester, uh, my on my second year, I changed that to marketing, which is better fitting. I think you gotta know yourself to really pick what you want to do for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Like even like when they ask you what you want to be for the rest of your life, and you, you spend a hundred thousand plus dollars on that, you invest into it. You're only 18. Like you haven't really even experienced let's say 25% of your life really. Mm -hmm. You have 75% of your life left and you're making a plan for the rest of it. At such a young age, it's so tough. But some people know what they want to be, some people don't. Uh, Did you know that you wanted to be an attorney right away? Um, Well, I remember when I was really young, like I was probably eight or nine. I made this list of the things that I wanted to be and I wanted the list was like I wanted to be an artist, I wanted to be a writer, and I wanted to be a mother. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I'm a lawyer now. I mean, but when I when I got older, um, when I was 12, and when someone would ask me that question, I did say that I wanted to be an attorney. That's cool. And um, and at the time. I think at the time, like I chose to, I chose to be an attorney because I just felt like it was a really high goal. Um, whenever I had made that decision, like my mom, you know, my mom was, I think she maybe added like a, her associate's degree or something like that. I mean, she had a, a good job at the, you know, working for the tribe, 
but it wasn't something where you would have to go to you know years of college in order to like be um so i don't know i was just like sat in the bar high to myself and um i don't know i mean i've just always just i've since then since i said oh, well, i want to be a lawyer it was, it was for dumb 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 things because i like i like to argue a lot so i guess because just what you see on tv was lawyers arguing with each other um like that sounds like a good fit they make money uh so i've just always since then takes taken steps to get to that point and any time that i tried to divert from that path i i felt like it was the universe or god or that was like nope this is the path it's time to come back you gotta come back is what you're doing and so like and even initially like i didn't i didn't want to practice in indian law i <clears throat> i work for tribes um I wanted to be like work, be a criminal prosecutor, and I don't know that's not what happened. Now here I am working for a tribe. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess I'm kind of like a prosecutor or whatever, but you know, it, it just wasn't initially like something that I thought was going to do was be in this Indian law community or work for tribes. I didn't think that was something that was going to happen, but like I said over time, like this is the universe was like this is. This is your path. I don't know if it's similar. I, I mean, a writer, I guess, because you have to write a lot as a, an attorney, uh, art, like an artist. To be creative. I, I guess you gotta be creative in your arguments. Yeah. Um. And yeah, and I'm a mom, so yes, check, check, check. Ah, <sighs> baby. You're one of the most incredible people that like I've ever had the luxury of being around on a frequent basis because you know who you are in a lot of ways. Like you're defined, and you know a lot of women, a lot of people just have a tough time like really, you know, picking something and sticking with it. But you really know your purpose and. You're delivering on it too, so it's like you know some people squander their talents. Like we use it on a daily basis to help, and uh, you know that's all the way from me to the kids to your your clients. So you're awesome. That's one of the best things about you. You know what you want, and you go after it. I love you for that. Well, that is today's show. <laughs> now we have to rate the food. I give it a, a shiny it's... zero. <laughs> really? Yeah. The ambiance was more of a trick than anything else. <laughs> it, it made me even more angry. Because sometimes I'll give you, I'll give the location like extra points because, oh, at least it looked nice. No, that actually gives you like <laughs> negative points. Because you look nice and your food is <laughs> not rep. And then your soda was off. Like, come on. Get your mixes right. What do you think? Uh, I don't know, maybe like a three. A three. So it wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't great. And it was expensive too, so it was definitely not worth what we paid. Yeah. And how far we traveled. So it still has a three. That's a 1.5 average. Don't come here. Please save yourself the money, the uh, time, and probably the stomach ache. All right. right Till next time. Bye.